record and then we'll make a start. At least, uh, okay, I'm going to drop this window down as well. And it feels criminal to shut the sun out, but you guys won't see me otherwise. There we go. Okay, fabulous. Right, we're going to start in standing. So if you want to just find yourself on the centre of your mat, and you'll need a little bit of space um, to the side of you first. Okay, so just pause in there for a moment. So just taking that opportunity to find that nice, slow, steady breath, the one that fills our lungs with air, the one that causes our tummy to rise, and the one that takes our tension away when we, when we let it out. So a couple more moments just to breathe in and out. Super, two more. You can close your eyes if you want to connect in with that breath. And then on your next one, opening your eyes, just dropping those shoulders down with that breath out and using that as your shoulder set. You've got a nice long collarbone and you're gonna keep that shoulder set as you now bring your arms just up to the side of you with your breath in and then breathe out and lower them back down again. So still focusing on Almost the emphasis with the arms just allows the rib cage to expand. But remember, the key focus with this is that shoulder set position. So as the arms float up, we're going to try to avoid the shoulders raising up with them. Almost emphasize a press down with the shoulders as those arms lift up. And you should feel those lovely, deep, strong muscles connecting around your rib cage to stabilize and anchor your shoulders down so your hands can move freely. Two more, and then we're gonna add a little bit of movement to challenge our balance. So make sure your feet are hip distance apart, make sure your pelvis is level, and then when you're ready, we're gonna add a heel raise. And if you want to, draw the pelvic floor in at the same time. So just tightening gently around your back passage and then releasing as you lower. Good stuff, keep it going. So nice and simple, but there's a good few things to think about there. So even though we've added the feet in, don't forget to work on that shoulder set. So really want you to feel the muscles around the base of your shoulder blades, just contracting as you float your hands up and then work on that pelvic floor or that deep tummy if you want to. But believe you me, all of these muscles are going to be kicking in, even as we don't think about it. We've got two more and then we challenge our balance even more as we take the next one and we hold it. So hands at shoulder height, shoulders away from the ears, pelvic floor switched on if you want to. Heels are lifted and you're going to stay here or you're going to challenge your balance even more by taking it into head turn. So glance over to one shoulder. Keep that pelvic floor switched on if you can, and then bring it back to the centre, over to the second shoulder, back to the centre. Go again for me, so either hold with your gaze forwards or add that glance from side to side, brilliant. As we take the gaze out, we're moving from side to side, there's nothing for us to fix on, so our balance systems do work that little bit harder. Lovely, now come back to the front, lower the heels, lower the hands and just give those shoulders a nice roll for me. Okay, so hopefully that's brought us into that nice kind of awake and aware movement, connecting with our bodies. So we're gonna progress on a little bit now. So in a moment, um, we're gonna turn, we're gonna use the arms at the same position, but you're gonna need a little bit of space behind you. So I'm gonna turn sideways. This is the position of my arms, just in case you can't see my back arm from here. I'm going to take it into a reverse lunge from here. So the arms stay where they are. They actually help a little bit with balance. Then keeping your feet hip distance apart, step long behind you, bending your back knee, then pushing the floor away from you, step your feet back at distance apart. Okay, so step behind with the opposite leg, bending the back knee, pushing back up and stepping forwards. Just gonna see if I can get my mat a bit more in view. The camera, that's better. Okay, so step back, lower, push up, and return okay so a bit dynamic so it does challenge your balance 
but pause at every point and see if you can find your balance. So you're not wobbling between those movements. You have a tray of drinks resting on your head, you can keep it steady. And remember with these lunges, the focus on the movement is traveling down to the floor and not forwards and down. So we're not lunging over the front foot, we're keeping the knees behind the toes. And as you do that, you feel that back leg taking that strain, but building strongly with it. Okay, I'm gonna turn face on. A couple of other things to think about is the positioning of your knees. So making sure that your knees don't cave in together as you drop down into your lunge. How are we doing with that? You've got it. You've got it really well. Nice. Keep it going. A couple more. Good knee positions. Those of you who can see side on, you're really getting that nicely. So hold your next one for me, okay? So you've got one leg out behind, you're down in your lunge, you're going to hold that lunge position. Arm position changes now though. So we bend the elbows, keep the palms facing down to the floor, and then we rotate the hands so the palms face up. Stop the traffic, let the traffic go. You're doing your best lollipop person impression, but you're holding that lunge. So that back knee should start to feel a bit wobbly. That back leg is working hard. If you need to stand up at any point, straighten the back leg out and then drop back down when you can, yeah? So side on position, back leg bent, arms, elbows in line with the shoulders, hands rotating up and down. And you're trying to create those two straight lines with a 90 degree angle maintained at your elbow. Stretch the legs out when you need to. You should need to. If you don't need to, go a bit deeper. Good. Three more rotations. Squeezing the shoulder blades gently together as the hands lift up. Two more. And then we stop the traffic and we hold it there. We pulse the back of the arms towards the back of the rooms. So you've got a pencil lengthways down your spine between your shoulder blades and you're trying to pulse it. This is your first option. Your second option is you combine a pulse with the legs as well. So as you pulse the arms back, you pulse down with the knee. 10, nine, eight, oh my gosh, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, lovely step forwards, relax the arms down, have a big deep breath in and out for me, shaking out what you need to. Okay, we're gonna do it again, taking it onto that second side. We might be a bit quicker on this side now we know what we're doing. Okay, so just reversing that um, step behind with the opposite leg now. So set your lunge up, bring your arms out to the side, Elbows bent, same movement with the arms, okay? So we're bending that back knee and then adding that rotation. So palms forwards, palms down. Watch the positioning of that front knee. I just had to reposition mine. So make sure that your knee isn't drifting inwards. Sometimes when we do our squats, we talk about having a grape on the underside of the arch of your foot. Think about that for your front foot, yeah? Make sure you're not squashing your grape. Have a little look down at your foot, check you can still see your toes. If you can't, you need to sit a bit further backwards and work on that shoulder position. So elbows in line with your shoulders. Stand up and shake it out if you need to. Then join back in again. You don't need to shake it out yet. Go a bit deeper. Good. Just bring those elbows up in line with your shoulders. Yeah, we're not down here. We're up here. I oh, know, sorry. <laughs> I'm telling you to do things and you're like, this is hard enough already. Holding this one. Drawing your tummy towards your spine, squeezing those elbows, opening the fronts of the shoulders. And if you want to add the pulse through the legs, you can. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two and one. Oh, that was so nice and so not nice in equal measure, but it's done with now. We got through it. Well done, everyone. Okay, a little bit more on the legs. Sorry. <laughs> nice wide stance this time. So feet stepping out along the width of your mat, 
turning the toes towards the corners of the room. Let's just work on pelvic tilt from here because it's always nice to open up the back. So imagine you stood against the wall and you're just flattening your back into the wall and then creating a little gap where the lower part of your back sits. Tuck under and then ease off. Now's a chance, I mean, I don't know about you, but my heart rate went up with all of those lunges and pulses. So just breathe it out. See if you can bring your heart rate back down again. What are we on? 106. <laughs> okay, see if we can lengthen the spine now. So tuck the tailbone underneath and soften the rib cage down towards the waist. So we're really just trying to, to lengthen this area here. Keep the shoulders stacked over the hips and slide down the wall, okay, as we go down, those knees bend and see if we can get them in that direction. And then we press the floor away from us as we come back up to stand. Another chance to work that pelvic floor, always good. Tightening as we come up to stand. Equal weight through both legs. So on your next one, just think, am I leaning towards one leg? Especially if you've got any injuries or any sort of musculoskeletal disorders where you might have a bit of discomfort in one of your joints, your knees or your hips. It's really interesting how quickly our body will tend to offload that. But if it's comfortable, see if you can get that load equal throughout both sides. So you've got a plumb line going down your nose, your breastbone, your belly button towards the middle of your legs onto the floor. If you've shifted across, that plumb line won't be quite central between your feet. Good. Keep it going. Three more. You've got it. Go a bit deeper for me. Go on. I know you can. That's great. Well done. Two more. We're going to hold this next one. Hands are going to come down in front of you, keeping that tummy drawn in towards the spine. Bring those arms back up again. So shoulders connected down into the back pockets, especially as those arms float above shoulder height. Try to avoid them um, lifting up and also that rib cage as well. Lovely. So this is your first option, just holding the squat and lifting and lowering. And of course, your second option is to add that pulse back in again. So just gently bouncing into the bottom end of that movement as the arms float up and down. Kind of going up to a pace of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight at the top, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, down to the bottom. Good, three more rounds. Squeeze that pelvic floor, send those knees to the corners of your room. Don't squash your grapes underneath the arches of your feet. One more. Okay, lovely. Now we're going to bring the hands above the head. We're going to hold them there. Yeah. Shoulders away from the ears. We stay here. Or if you can just see those heels of mine have popped off the floor. Okay, so either with a heel lift, or without a heel lift, but hold that deep squat. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Lovely, come down and push up to stand. Very nice, okay. Just slowly walk your heels in towards the center of your mat and stand tall for me. Another chance just to wind things back down again. So we're kind of doing a bit of an interval training. We're building up the heart rate and then we're lowering it back down. So we're just gonna do some roll downs from here. And believe you me, that blood should be pumping around your body. If it's not, do this video tomorrow and work a bit harder, okay? Starting with your roll down then. So nice and tall, slowly peel down through your spine, one bone at a time, okay? You're back against that wall and you just want one bone to peel away before the next one comes and so on and so forth. You don't need to force it. We'll do a few of these. So just allow your back to open up into that position and then step back up again, lovely. Then when you get to the top, we simply repeat. Enjoy a few of these. And again, just see if you can focus on bringing your breathing back down into that nice, real deep, restorative breath. Sometimes when we go into that forwards fold, we tend to kind of catch our breath a little bit. So really try and focus on a real deep exhale when you get into your forwards fold. Because as we breathe out, we almost send a signal to our nervous system for everything to relax. So you might find 
the flexibility improves if you time that breath out. Now on the last one or two, I want you just to think about coming forwards over your feet now. So imagine that you're just trying to lift your heels just enough to me to slip a five pound note underneath. So they're not coming off the floor, but we're just taking that pressure out of them just for me to put that five pound note underneath your heels. Now as you come forwards, you'll feel your feet have to work a little bit harder. Your toes might even kind of grip onto the mat a little bit. Your arches are raised and you're stretching through the back line of that body a little bit more. So a bit more challenging on your flexibility. Lovely. We'll just hold the next one in that slight forwards lean ever so slight. So as I say, you're not coming off the mat, just bringing the pressure out of your heels and into the front of your feet. And if you haven't got socks on, just look at kind of how that changes your toe position as well. So the toes flex a little bit more. Toes might change colour as they take that pressure and you get a big stretch down the back. OK, lovely. Bring yourself back up to stand. And then when you're ready, we're going to come down onto the mat and we're going to work in a sitting position. So I'll give you a chance just to kind of fix your cameras if you need to how are we doing for time okay 12 minutes oh my goodness time flies when you're having fun okay so we're going to work on our roll downs which is all about the lengthening and strengthening of the abdominal wall so you're going to sit with your feet um hip distance apart i'm just going a bit wider at the moment um knees in line with your hips okay and you're going to start off nice and tall so we'll Begin with a simple roll down and then we'll add in some variations if you want to work a little bit harder. OK, and the distance that you go is really dependent on the kind of strength um, you have and that control around your tummy. So some of us struggle with these. Some of us can go all the way down and come back up. No problem. OK, so we start nice and tall and then we tuck under with the tailbone and roll back off the pelvis, tightening the tummy towards the spine maybe a little bit of a breath here and then we bring the shoulders forwards and we sit tall again okay so as I say you might be able to go a little bit deeper or it might just be a case of rolling off your seat bones sitting a little bit more on your kind of sacrum you the flat part at the bottom of your spine and sitting up or you might be kind of coming all the way down here and then pushing back up again Watch that shoulder position. So even though the hands are in front of us, we still want to open and almost lift the chest up towards the ceiling. So we're not kind of collapsing into that roll down. We're still keeping that lovely posture and line at the top of the body. Lovely. Now make sure the knees stay in line with the hips and they don't kind of collapse into one another. Usually that's a sign that our um, inner thigh muscle, our adductor muscles are trying to give us some stability. Isn't always a bad thing. Looking good, looking strong. So there's your first option. And at any point, if you need to, just hug it out, bring those knees in towards your chest and go again, okay? If you're feeling that you don't really need to use your hands then, as we roll back, we're gonna take the hands and we're gonna reach them over the top of the head. Keep the rib cage sucking down towards your pelvis. So don't let your back arch as your hands lift. We still want that shortening of the, um, of the, the rib cage towards the pelvis and then we come back up to sit again okay so we roll back as we roll back the hands come up and then as we come forwards the hands just come back to shoulder height if that's too much we just take it back here using the support behind the knees to help breathing out so these are tricky you should have a trembly tummy already if not go deeper three more Two more. We're going to hold this last one. So either hold here or hold here. OK, final option, third option is we pulse. So a little lift with the, the breastbone coming up and down, but not far into that movement. Just as if you're kind of being pushed at your back and then you're dropping backwards. So push forwards, backwards. Keep going. Ten. Or just hold it. Nine, eight, seven, six, 
five, four, we're going three, two and one. Come all the way up, bend your knees and just drape yourself over bent legs. Really nice, they are really tough. We don't kind of visit those roll-ups that option that often. So it always feels like a good challenge when we come back to them. Super, okay. Hopefully your heart rate's bringing itself back down again. You stay where you are. I'm just gonna turn face forwards, face forwards um, on towards the camera. Nice little stretching sequence now. So hopefully you enjoy the break from the strength work. So this one kind of helps with posture, but it also gets the spine moving as well. So you'll notice I've just put my hands on the mat, okay? So it does require a little bit of wrist strength. If that's a problem for you, make a fist and just push into your fists. But we always talk about this, don't we? The importance of strengthening those wrists. So see what you can tolerate. So your fingertips are pointing to the sides of your mat, okay? Your first, um, the first movement we're gonna do is lift the chest up towards the ceiling. So just turn side up. So we push away from the floor. Notice the difference between me being here, slouched to here, lifted. And it sets those shoulders down into the back pockets, okay? So we're here, we breathe in. As we breathe out, we take one hand and we take it into side bend. Don't collapse down with that top arm. Back to the center, sink down push up and then second side same again back to center sink down push up and side bend lovely sink down push up and side bend if you want to work it a little bit harder we take it into the sink down as we push up we lift not only the chest but also the hips, okay? But the head stays looking forwards. So we're in our reverse box position, lifted. Then we come back down and we reach over, okay? Back to center, lift the chest, maybe lift the hips. Back down, second side. Good, keep it going. So just lift in the center, chest or chest and hips, and then stretch through the side. Good work, lovely Ivana, squeeze those hips as you come up. That's it Emma, well done, lovely Isabel. Well done Sue, so a lot of you going for that hip lift often. Lovely Elaine, just keep that chin pressed down. So sometimes our heads just wanna drop back but they get a bit heavy when we drop them back. So keep looking forwards. Lovely Fiona, watch those knees aren't come collapsing in together, that's better. So you imagine you've got a band tied around your knees and you're just pushing them apart. Same for you, Liz. So just push into the outer border of your knees. That's better. Well done. Good work, everyone. Well done, Jill. Okay, one more on each side. And then we're just gonna hold that side stretch. So pushing over to one side, just hold for a moment, pressing into one hand, lengthening into the other. Chance just to be still, just to breathe. Oh, it's windy outside. Looks like a nice day, but it's quite windy, isn't it? Okay, go over to the second side. So side bend on your second side, reach up and over. Great stuff. Okay, and then we've got to hold that supine lift as well. So if the supine lift is tricky for you, just work on the prep, which is just lifting the chest. But if you're going to go for the hips as well, bring them up. So a couple of things we pointed out in the last one, try not to let your knees drop in, keep them in line with your hips and try not to let your head drop back. Squeeze your bottom and really press the heels of your hands into the mat so that your, your shoulders are pressing down towards the floor even as your hips are lifting up. Good work, guys. Looks good to me from here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 10 side on, just finish. 6, 5, 4, half an inch higher, 3, 2, 
and one well done come down and once more just give your knees a hug and your wrists a little bit of a stretch out fabulous okay just hang there for a moment longer good stuff we're going to just do a little bit of hamstring stretch and then we're going to finish with some box work okay so you're going to take one knee hug it in towards your chest and then breathe in and as you breathe out just slowly lengthen the other leg away from you have your foot in a in a sort of a rested position so don't flex the toes too much just for now if you want to make it even easier point the toes and we're going to take a breath in and we're going to see if we can reach down the leg of that straight leg side just let your chin really relax down towards your chest. Hold that stretch as you breathe. Feel like a nice long lengthen down the back of the leg. And if you feel like you can't breathe, back out of the stretch a little bit more. As I said at the start, that exhale, exhalation is really powerful in sending a signal through your nervous system that allows everything to relax. If you can't breathe out, your muscles will hold on even if you don't want them to. And then if you're feeling a little bit of a give in that range, what you can do is change the position of your foot. So have the toes gently pointing up towards the ceiling or maybe even creating a little bit of flexion with the toes towards you. And you should feel that that takes the stretch further down into the leg, increases the intensity of it, does get that sciatic nerve, um, a little bit of tension through it. So just be, just be mindful with that. Just do what you can and then just soften the foot fold the leg in and let's try that on the second side so I want you to to gradually ease yourself into this now yeah so set yourself up in that prop sort of seated position toes relaxed or maybe pointed on the opposite leg before we reach down again just focusing in on your breathing now's the time that the brain kicks in isn't it when we're holding positions still start to think about what you're going to have for dinner or what's going on tomorrow none of that matters at the moment i just want you to focus on your breathing and your stretching adding in that foot change if you want to so toes up or toes towards you lovely okay then slowly allow both legs to lengthen and feet together or feet just sort of hip distance apart. I'm just going a bit wider today. So again, just start with both toes pointed, breathe in. And then as you breathe out, just start to reach down your legs towards your shins, maybe towards your feet. Just find a position where you can settle and rest. Well done, that's it. Just keep breathing. Just keep reaching and then maybe changing that foot position but only if it's comfortable for you so adding that gentle flex at the ankle if you want to so toes pointing up toes drawn towards you if you're lucky enough to be able to be at your feet then yeah you can kind of hook around your toes it's a little bit of kind of a yoga technique of kind of drawing your feet towards you using that leverage but don't worry if you're not there okay three more deep breaths two more deep breaths and one lovely then just slowly back off from your feet allow your toes to relax and ease up beautiful flexibility there this evening so we're nearly done okay we mentioned that we were going to kind of feed a little bit of shoulders into this session today so we're going to finish with some press ups because that's the best way isn't it get those shoulders working so if you want to bring yourself into a box position nothing fancy with these press ups we're just going to see if we can get some repetitions done See if we can go a little bit deeper than we usually do, maybe because there's nothing um, fancy to add. So remember your options really with this and kind of how long your box is. So setting up in a box position to start with, or we can bring the hands a bit further forwards and take the weight over the hands. OK, if press ups are just not for you, stand up and do a variety um, a variation sorry, of pressing into the wall or into a table. So once you've decided how long your box is going to be, lift the back of your head, 
slide your shoulders away from your ears and tuck your tailbone underneath. I can't emphasize enough how important that tailbone is. So making sure it doesn't, your bum doesn't stick up in the air as you come down into your press up is more important than going deep into it. So once you've set that position, the tummy is active. So gently drawing in towards the spine and then we slowly, slowly lower down and then we press away. And that's it. We go down and we go up and we keep on going until I say stop. <laughs> so if you need to stop at any point, just push back onto your heels. Now, remember what you're trying to lower to the ground is your chest, not your nose. OK, chest press, not nose press. So sometimes we can create the illusion that we've got a really good press up, but actually we're not really moving and loading up the chest. So thinking about that helium balloon floating your the back of your head up towards the ceiling, okay? Now you might just be working up here and that's fine. I'd rather you work up here with good control than take it deeper and your bum starts sticking up, okay? Or you might be working a bit deeper and if you want to, you could do a full press up. I'm not going to, but if you want to, be my guest. I think everyone's reluctant because it's like, how long are we going to be here for? So I'm going to come and see how you're all getting on and then we'll do a little bit of a countdown. You're all looking great. Well done. OK, so I think that gives us eight more, eight more for me to do with you. OK, keep them slow, keep them steady. I'm going to count my final eight. And I'm going to try and go as low as I can, as low as I did for my first few. So let's see if you can um, match me. That's seven. That's six. That's five. Nearly there. Halfway four. Ooh. Three. The gap between them is getting longer. <laughs> two and that's one sit back into your heels and take a well-deserved stretch take your weight out of your wrists and again breathe deeply So just brought your attention today a little bit more to kind of your heart rate. So you should have felt in those press ups, your heart rate picks up. So often when we think of fitness, health and fitness, we think about heart rate being raised through cardiovascular exercise. So things like running, walking, cycling, which is a really good way of doing it. But strengthening can also work on your heart rate. And you're also getting that benefit of building up your muscles as well. So little intervals of strengthening exercises are equally as good for your cardiovascular as your muscular system. Okay, when you feel ready to come sit out of that stretch, we can stay there if you want to.